Now, what we do in a very timely moment, I think, is with Donna, and many of you will have uh, read Donna's blogs and know of her marvellous work, uh, Donna La Framboise. It's marvellous to have her here because she's from Canada, but luckily she was in Germany, I think, Donna, so was able to make the journey over to us here. She is going to tell us about perhaps the organisation above all that has actually pushed through that change in science and viewpoint. So, Donna Lafondos, thank you. Good afternoon. I'm very excited to be here. This is my first time in the uh, Parliament buildings, and this is, um, this, is, this is very nice indeed. Um, I have uh, just written a book. It is a very new book. It's called um, The Delinquent Teenager Who Was Mistaken for the World's Top Climate Expert, which is a very long title. Um, and the, the main argument of the book is that almost nothing that we've been told about the IPCC is true. And the title comes from the fact that when I first started doing research about climate change, I read about this marvelous organization called the IPCC. And I, had, I formed this picture in my mind. It was, it was rigorous and it was respectable and it was dressed in, in business attire and it was a very trustworthy organization. It was a grown-up. And the more I learned about the IPCC, the more that idea, that mental picture changed, and what I started to see instead was a spoiled child, a child that has been praised and admired and flattered for its entire life, a child that was given rules to follow, didn't follow those rules, and faced no consequences as a result. So it seems to me that this spoiled child has now turned into a, an obnoxious teenager and that this teenager has become all of our problems because it, it's, it's a problem for all of us because this organization is writing some very important reports and countries around the world are pointing to the IPCC and saying this is why we have to undertake these very expensive very intrusive changes to, to our lives because the IPCC says so. So something strange is happening to my fonts, I'm sorry about that. Um, so one of the things I think that's useful to, to ask is who writes IPCC reports? And there's actually a list of five quotes on this page, but only one of them is, 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 um, is I'm showing here. So what the list, the list of this slide should say, uh, should have two quotes from, um, from science journalists. It should have a quote from the science press, the energy sector press. And there's a quote from the um, head of UNEP, United Nations Environmental Program. And all of these people are essentially using slightly different words, but they are telling us that that it's the best scientists, it's the top scientists, it is experts in their field who are, it's the world's finest scientific minds, that is who is writing IPCC reports. And indeed, the green NGOs are also um, singing from the same, to, uh, same hymn book. So it's leading scientists, leading climate scientists, the world's brightest scientists. That's who's working on IPCC reports, that's who we're told is. Where did these ideas come from? Well, we can trace them right back to the IPCC's chairman. So the former chairman, Robert Watson, has told us this is the world's best experts. The current chairman, Dr. Regina Pachori, has also said this is the world's best specialist. So it would appear that we have a consensus. And just to give you an idea of the flavor, here is a quote from Chairman Pachori. These are people who have been chosen on the basis of their track record on their record of publications, on the research that they have done. They are people who are at the top of their profession. So everyone agrees that's who writes IPCC reports. Well, I do a lot of investigative work as a journalist, and rather than just accepting what people say, I actually go to the trouble of looking beneath the surface to see if these claims, if there's any actually any evidence for these claims. And what I found was quite startling, um, and I'm not suggesting that there have not been some brilliant scientists who have been associated with the IPCC. What I am suggesting is that there are a lot of other people who have been helping to write these reports who are not remotely close to being the world's top experts. 
So who really writes IPCC reports? Well, one group is 20-something graduate students. Now, these people are not helping out. These are people who have been given lead author roles on IPCC reports. So we have Richard Klein, who is currently a geography professor. He became an IPCC lead author at age 25. Three years later, the IPCC put him in a leadership role. He was leading a chapter. The problem is he didn't get his PhD until 2003. Now, in academic circles, before you get your PhD, you're pretty invisible on, 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 in the academic world. You are not, by any means, one of the world's top experts. So we have Lawrence Bauer. He was a lead author for the IPCC before he earned his master's degree, never mind his PhD. And Sari Kovats, who is actually a representative of the UK on, on the IPCC. Back in 1994, the IPCC decided to write about the very important issue of how the climate change affect human health. It shows 21 people from the entire world to look at this, this rather important issue. Sari Kovats was one of those 21 people, but she didn't get there because of her publication record. In fact, it would be three years after before her first academic paper was published. It would be, in fact, 16 years later before she earned her doctorate. But she has been a longtime member of the IPCC and, in fact, is currently working on the upcoming IPCC report. So who else is writing IPCC reports? People who have been appointed because they re represent the right country or they belong to the right gender. Now this is pretty amazing because you know when you're told it's the world's top experts, that's what you expect. Last year, the Inter-Academy Council, which is an organization of science um, academies around the world, decided to launch an investigation into the IPCC. It was the first time anything like that happened. It was pretty remarkable. And as part of their information gathering, they posted a questionnaire online. And they invited people who had participated in the IPCC to answer questions such as, what is your opinion about how the IPCC chooses its lead authors? Those questions were bundled together into a 678-page PDF, which is available online. You can download it. The names of the people were removed, however, so we don't know who is speaking. And if you download that document, you find that as early as page 16, these IPCC insiders are saying that some lead authors are clearly not qualified. Fast forward 100 pages or so, you have someone saying that half of the lead authors in their chapter were not competent, that instead they were politically correct appointments from developing countries. And then fast forward a few more 100 pages and you have someone else saying all IPCC personnel decisions are political before being scientific. Now, I think that's rather alarming, and these are IPCC insiders themselves. Who else? Professional activists have also been helping to write IPCC reports. Now, these are people who are taking paychecks from activist organizations. We have Richard Moss, who has been involved with the IPCC for 20 years. During part of that time, he was a vice president of the World Wildlife Fund. Bill Hare is considered a legend in Greenpeace. He has been a spokesperson since the early 1990s for Greenpeace. And when the last report came out in 2007, he was one of only 40 people who helped to write the synthesis report, which is the summary of summaries, because IPCC reports are thousands of pages. You need some executive summaries. He's in the inner circle writing that report. Now, there are more students, there are more activists, but we, we don't have a lot of time today, so I'm, you know, in my book, these are not the only ones by any means. So here's two more, Michael Oppenheimer. 
He worked for 20 years for the Environmental Defense Fund. It's a very wealthy, very influential activist group in, um, in the U.S. He is currently leading an IPCC chapter for the upcoming report. And Jennifer Morgan, she looks like a very pleasant person. I'm sure she'd be really fun to have coffee or drink with. But she is not one of the world's finest scientific minds. If you look at Jennifer's CV, she has spent her entire career working for one activist group after another activist group. And for a while, in fact, she was the World Wildlife Fund's chief spokesperson on climate change. Nevertheless, the IPCC has appointed her to work on its current.